Amen. By the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the divine will, I enter into the holy divine will. Come, divine will, come beat in my every heartbeat. Come breathe in my every breath. Come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. In, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary and Louisa. In, with, and for all. That all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls. Giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Be Jesus asks her to be more precise in writing. April 29, 1906, how the soul who is empty of everything is like water that always runs. Continuing in my usual state, blessed Jesus came for just a little, and filling all of my interior with himself, he told me, My daughter, an empty soul is like water that runs, and always runs. And when it reaches the center from which it came, only then does it stop. And since water has no color, it receives into itself all the colors that are reflected in it. In the same way, the empty soul runs and always runs toward the divine center from which she came. And when she comes to fill all of herself completely with God, only then does she stop. In fact, since she is empty, nothing of the divine being escapes her. And since she does not have a color of her own, she receives all the divine colors into herself. Now, only an empty soul, because she is empty of everything, comprehends things according to the truth the preciousness of suffering, the true good of virtue, the necessity for the Eternal One alone. Because in order to love something, it is absolutely necessary to hate that which is opposite to what is loved. Only an empty soul reaches such a great happiness. May 4th, 1906, Fears and Tears of the Soul. Jesus asks her to be more precise in writing. I was very afflicted for not having seen my adorable Jesus clearly with the addition that my thought was telling me that Jesus, he who is my life, did not love me any more. Oh God, what mortal pains my poor heart felt. I did not know what to do to free myself from this. 
I shed bitter tears, and to free myself I said, He does not love me any more, and out of spite that he does not love me any more, I shall love him more than before. I wrote this to obey. Then after much hardship, he came, bearing my tears on his face. I did not understand well why, but it seemed to me that since that thought had excited me and almost irritated me into loving him more, pleased with it, he would almost say to me, What? I do not love you? I love you so much that I keep an account even of your tears, and I bear them on my face for my pleasure. Then afterwards he added, My daughter, I want you to be more precise, more exact, and to manifest everything in writing, because you skip many things, even though you take them for yourself without writing them, but many things shall serve others. On hearing this I remained confused, because in truth I do this. And my repugnance to write is so great that only the miracles that obedience can do could conquer me, since of my own will I would not be good at writing a single comma. May everything be for the glory of God and to my confusion. May 6, 1906 God is food and life of the soul. Continuing in my usual state, blessed Jesus came for just a little, with a loaf of bread in his hand, as if he wanted to refresh me, for I feel so ill because of his continuous privations that it seems that a mere thread of life keeps me alive, and that I would be reduced to ashes and consumed under this thread. Then, after he refreshed me with that bread, he told me, my daughter, the material bread is food and life for the body, and there is no particle of the body that does not receive life from that bread. In the same way, God is food and life of the soul, and there must be no particle that does not take life and food from God, that is, animating all of oneself in God, nourishing one's desires in God and making one's affections, inclinations, and love take life and food in God, in such a way as to enjoy no other food but God alone. But, oh, how many let their souls feed on all sorts of filth! Having said this, he disappeared, and I found myself inside a church and it seemed that various people were saying, Curse you! Curse you! As if they wanted to curse the blessed Lord, and also creatures themselves. I don't know how. I comprehended all the weight of those maledictions, as though they signified the destruction of God and of themselves. And I cried bitterly, because of these maledictions. Then I saw a priest celebrating at the altar, as if he were our Lord. And coming into the midst of those who had uttered those maledictions, he said with a solemn and authoritative voice, Maledicti! Maledicti! At least twenty times or more, and while he was saying this, it seemed that many thousands of people would drop dead, some from revolutions, some from earthquakes, some in the fire, some in the water. It seemed to me that these chastisements were the precursors of nearing wars. I cried, and he drawing near me told me, 
My daughter, do not fear, for I am not cursing you. On the contrary, I say to you, Benedicta, thousands and thousands of times. Cry and pray for these peoples. May 7th, 1906. Jesus does not want to go out of the interior of Louisa. This morning, after I received communion, I saw blessed Jesus in my interior, and I said to him, My beloved, come out from inside. Come outside, that I may clasp you, kiss you, and speak with you. And he, making a sign with his hand, told me, My daughter, I do not want to come out. I am well within you, because if I go out of your humanity, a humanity that contains tenderness, compassion, weakness, concern, it would be as if I went out of my living humanity. In fact, since you occupy my same office of victim, I should make you feel the weight of the pains of others, and therefore spare them. I shall go out, yes, but not from within you, rather from within God, without a humanity, and my justice shall make its course as appropriate to chastise the creatures. And it seemed he would go deeper and deeper inside. I repeated to him, Lord, come out, spare your children, your very members, your images. And he, making a sign with his hand, repeated, I am not coming out. I am not coming out. He repeated this quite a few times, and he communicated to me many things about what humanity contains, but I am unable to say them. I have them in my mind, but I cannot express them with words. I would rather have not written this, but obedience did not want it. Fiat, always fiat. May 15th, 1906. The soul is like a sponge. If she squeezes herself, she becomes soaked with God. Continuing in my usual state, I felt an extreme affliction because of the privation of blessed Jesus, and I was almost tired and my strengths exhausted. Now he made himself seen for just a little in my interior and told me, My daughter, it is a continuous squeezing of herself that the soul must do. In fact, the soul is like a sponge. If she squeezes herself, she becomes soaked with God. And by becoming soaked with God, she feels the life of God within herself, and therefore love for virtue and holy inclinations. She feels herself conquered and transformed in God. While if she does not squeeze herself, she remains soaked with herself, and therefore she feels all the effects that a corrupted nature contains, and all vices peep out, pride, envy, disobedience, impurity, and so forth. May 18th, 1906. The soul suffers while Jesus sleeps. I was feeling very much in suffering, soul and body, to the point that I myself don't know how I live. When I saw blessed Jesus for just a little, resting and sleeping in my interior. I called him. I pulled him. But he would not listen to me. Then, after much hardship, he told me, My beloved do not want to disturb my rest. 
Do you not tell me that you want to suffer in my place? And that you want to suffer in your humanity? Everything that I would suffer in my humanity, if it were living? Intending to relieve my suffering members through your sufferings? By suffering yourself? So as to leave me free? So while you suffer, I rest. And while he was saying this, he fell asleep more soundly, and he disappeared. What he said to me are my continuous intentions in my sufferings. June 13, 1906 the soul would even do excesses to obtain the intent of being loved more by her highest and only good. I go on amid continuous privations. At the most, he makes himself seen in passing or resting and sleeping in my interior without saying a word to me. And if I go about lamenting, he either comes up saying to me, You are wrong to lament. Is it me that you want? Well, then you have me in the depth of your interior. What more do you want? Or, if you have me completely within you, why do you afflict yourself? Is it because I do not speak to you? By just seeing me, we understand each other. Or he comes up with a kiss, with a hug, with a caress. And if he sees that I do not calm down, he reproaches me severely, saying, I am only displeased with your displeasure. And if you do not calm yourself, I shall really give you displeasure by hiding completely. Who can say the bitterness of my soul? I feel dazed and I am unable to manifest what I feel. Besides, in certain interior states, it is better to keep silent and move on. Then this morning as I saw him, I felt myself being carried outside of myself. I cannot tell well whether it was paradise. There were many saints, all ignited with love. And the wonder was that all loved, but the love of one was distinct from the love of the other. However, finding myself with them, I tried to distinguish myself and to surpass them all in love, wanting to be the first among all in loving him, since my heart, too proud, could not bear that others would equal me because I seem to see that the one who loves more is closer to Jesus and is loved more by him. Oh, the soul would give in to all excesses. She would not care about either life or death, nor would she think of whether it is convenient for her or not. In some, she would even do excesses to obtain this intent, to be closer to him and to be loved a little bit more by her highest and only good. But to my greatest sorrow, after a short time, an irresistible force drove me back into myself. June 15, 1906, the whole of the divine life receives life from love. After I struggled very much, my blessed Jesus came in passing and told me, My daughter, it can be said that the whole of the divine life receives life from love. Love makes divine life generate. Love makes it produce. Love makes it create. Love makes it preserve and gives continuous life to all of its operations. So if it did not have love, it would not operate, or it would have no life. 
Now creatures are nothing but sparks, come out of the great fire of love, God, and their life receives life, and the attitude to operate from the spark. So the human life also receives life from love. However, not everyone uses it to love and to operate what is beautiful, what is good, the all. But they transform this spark, some into love of self, some into love of creatures, some of riches, and some even of beasts, to the highest sorrow of their creator, who having unleashed these sparks from his great fire, yearns to receive them all back into himself once again, expanded, like as many images of his divine life. But few are those who correspond to the imitation of their creator. Therefore, my beloved, love me, and let even your breath be a continuous act of love for me, that a small fire may form from this spark, so as to give vent to the love of your Creator. June 20th, 1906 Everything must be reduced to one single point. Everything must become a flame. Feeling very much in suffering, soul and body, and having spent the night with a flaming fever, I felt I was burning and being consumed. My strengths were exhausted. I felt I was dying. And added to that, he was not coming. Truly, I could take no more. Then, after a long time, I felt I was going outside of myself and I saw our Lord within an immense light, and myself completely nailed, even the tiniest particles of my members. It was not just my hands and feet like other times, but each of my bones had its nail driven into it. Oh, how many bitter pains I felt. At each slightest motion, I felt lacerated by those nails, and I fainted. I felt I was about to die, but I was resigned and immersed in the divine volition. That seemed to me to be the key that would open divine treasures. From that, I would draw strength to be sustained in that state of sufferings, to the point of making me content and happy. However, I was burning. Those nails seemed to produce fire, and I was all immersed in it. Blessed Jesus was looking at me and seemed to be pleased. Then he told me, My daughter, everything must be reduced to one single point. That is, everything must become a flame. And from this flame, filtered, pressed, beaten, a most pure light comes out. Not like the light of fire, but of sun, fully similar to the light that surrounds me. The soul who has become light cannot be away from the divine light. Rather, my light absorbs her into itself and transports her into heaven. Therefore, courage. This is the complete crucifixion of soul and body. Don't you see how your light is already about to take off from the flame? And my light awaits it in order to absorb it? While he was saying this, I looked at myself, and I saw a great flame inside of me. A tiny little flame of light came out of it. That was about to detach itself and take flight. Who can describe my contentment? At the thought of dying, 
at the thought of being always with my only and highest good, with my life, with my center. I felt paradise in advance. June 22, 1906, a garment similar to that of Jesus. Continuing in my state of sufferings, ever increasing, blessed Jesus came for a little and showed me a garment, all adorned and whole, without seam and opening, suspended above my person. While I was seeing this, he told me, My beloved, this garment is similar to my garment that I have communicated to you by having shared with you the pains of my passion and by having chosen you as victim. This garment covers and protects the world, and since it is whole, no one can escape its protection. But the world, with its abuses, no longer deserves to be covered by this garment, but to feel all the weight of the divine indignation. So I am about to draw it to myself, to be able to give vent to my justice that has been restrained for a long time by this garment. At that moment, it seemed that the light I had seen in the past days was inside this garment, and the Lord awaited both one and the other to absorb them into himself. June 23, 1906, Obedience makes her continue to live in the world as victim. Continuing to feel ill, I told the confessor what I have written above, keeping silent about a few things regarding the same topic, partly because of the extreme weakness I felt, as I had no strength to speak, and partly out of fear that obedience might set some trap for me. Oh, holy God, what fear! God alone knows how I live. I live dying continuously and my only relief would be dying to find my life again in God. Yet obedience wants to act as a cruel executioner, keeping me dying continuously rather than living forever in God. Oh, obedience, how terrible and strong you are. So the confessor told me that he would not permit it and that I was to tell the Lord that obedience did not want it. What a most bitter pain. So finding myself in my usual state, I saw our Lord and the confessor praying him not to let me die. Fearing that he might listen to him, I was crying. And the Lord told me, daughter, be quiet. Do not afflict me with your crying. I have every reason to take you, because I want to scourge the world. And out of regard for you and your sufferings, I feel as though bound. But the confessor is also right in wanting to keep you on earth, because poor world, poor Carato, in the state in which it finds itself, what would happen to it if no one protects it? and also for himself, because since you are there, I make use of you, sometimes directly, saying something regarding him, and sometimes indirectly, now reprimanding him, now pushing him, now keeping him from doing something that may displease me. So if I call you to myself, I shall make use of his sufferings, but courage, as things are now, I feel more disposed to make you content rather than the confessor. And I myself shall know how to change his will. Then I found myself inside myself, without having told him that obedience did not want it. 
It did not seem necessary to me to say it, because since I had seen the confessor together with our Lord, it seemed to me that he would already know everything. June 24, 1906. She continues to long for heaven. After I told the confessor what is written above, he got upset, for he absolutely wanted me to oppose the Lord, because obedience did not want it. As for myself, I was feeling worse. The thought of the many privations of blessed Jesus that had burned me to the quick over and over again made me long for heaven. I felt my poor humanity vividly as it kept grumbling against obedience. I felt my poor humanity as if under a press and I could not make up my mind. In the meantime, our Lord came with an arch of light in his hands. A scythe came out, also of light, that touched the arch that blessed Jesus held in his hands. And as the arch was touched, it remained absorbed in Christ, and he disappeared without giving me the time to tell what obedience wanted. I understood that the arch was my soul, and the scythe was death. June 26, 1906. She sees baby Jesus, who kisses her and compassionates her. Continuing in the same way, the confessor came, and he kept giving me the same obedience. Then as baby Jesus came, I told him of my bitternesses regarding the obedience, and he caressed me, compassionated me, and gave me many kisses. Through these kisses, he infused a breath of life in me, and as I found myself inside myself, I felt my humanity as though strengthened. God alone can understand these pains of mine because they are pains that I am unable to narrate. I hope at least that the Lord may want to give light to those who give these kinds of obedience. May the Lord forgive me. The pain makes me speak even excesses. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 7, Part 2. Fiat. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.